Hello there. This is Bar Pass going to paint for you tonight. I'm going to do a still life. I um, haven't done one in a little bit, so let me turn you around and show you what I'm doing. You're not a, a little hard to tell because of the light. There's a little ceramic rooster there, so he'll be challenging. So that'll be my focal point. This guy, this is a new gift that I got here just for my birthday recently. So I thought it'd be fun to paint that croc too. I love crocs. Old primitive things I really like. So you're set up pretty good, pretty much almost in front. So I've got to look around you. And uh, we're doing this on an 8x10 Centurion panel. And I'm going to start this the way I, I'm trying to work differently now. And I'm trying to spend more time on my sketch. So I'm mixing up a very dark color. Putting a little bit of the um, solvent-free Gamsol, the liquid. Tipping my brush into that. And I'm using a fairly ten tiny brush. And we'll be using the handle to help place things too. And I always use my view catcher when I paint from life, whether I'm outside or a still life. Love this thing. It's looking a little nasty. I could break down and get a new one, huh? <laughs> and I've got my setup on top of a box to bring the height up a little bit because I'm standing. You just have to decide, you know, do you want to look directly at it? I like looking down inside the containers a little bit. I think, you know, I think it gives them a little more dimension. So I got it up a little bit with a piece of fabric under it and I have my uh, illustration board behind it and I, it's lit with a light. So uh, played around, tried different items and this is what I, I like the looks of. So, all right, we'll kind of look through here. Actually, the crock is pretty much dead center, but something has to be in the middle. I mean, but it's not my focal point either, so. Okay, the rooster head is about a third of the way. So I'm just making some marks to get some things. So I know placement. The edge of the crock, I think, is about there. And the picture is going to overlap on it. And I don't think I'm running anything off, but you know, that could change. So, let me thin this down a little more. I went in yesterday and uh, did a little demo for a group that I paint with sometimes and told about my workshop and uh, showed them photos. It was fun. So we look how far down from the rim to here does the picture start and it's about there. I find with still lifes, if I can get one thing correct, I can usually, everything else can kind of play off of that. And I always like painting white items. I don't know if you do or not. And then we'll look at the negative space inside the handle to try to get that shape. And a lot of people start off, and maybe you do, with um, straight lines. Like they'll draw from here to here, and then here to here. And then you can come back and, and make curved lines. There's just no absolute wrong or right way, in my opinion, you know. I'm looking at that. That might be a little big.
These are silk sunflowers. Got a lot of silk flowers. I mean, they can look pretty good. I didn't really plan ahead or I might have picked up some uh, fresh ones. I saw sunflowers the other day. They are for sale. I don't know if you tend to rush through these videos. I mean, I, I admit it, I do that with some of these. I zip through, but I appreciate it. If the more time you spend watching, the better it is for me. You know, the more minutes um, they count toward me. It's hard to explain, but. Nothing is very precise at this point. I'm just kind of placing things, and then we're going to work on refining things. Or, like I said, we're going to spend, you know, more time on the sketch than I probably would have in the past. Like I say, color's fun, and you know, I know for me, I want to get the co get into the color, you know, and play with the color, but. I don't want to do it too soon. I want to take my time and enjoy this process too. And you could actually use a bigger brush for some of this, you know. I've got this little one to sketch with, but when you're placing big dark shapes, you could definitely, you know, of course, could go with a bigger brush. Looking for my darkest darks and then trying to clean up. Um, And again, it's kind of a value sketch that we're doing too. We're, we're doing the drawing and we're doing not an absolute value sketch, but we are putting in some values. And this is ultramarine and transparent red oxide. I don't know if I mentioned that. I get too heavy with this paint, we'll wipe it off. I don't want to fight that when we start laying in color. So, So even though this is a white picture, you know, like I said, we are thinking value. I'm going to use my little scraper. I've been using that a lot to remove paint. Someone asked me what it was the other day. It's by Catalyst, and I actually think I bought it to, uh, I, I bought some cold wax medium one time, and that's what I bought it for. But uh, in the workshop I took recently, she was using it for this, you know, to uh, remove paint, and so that's what I'm doing with it now.
Yeah, I'm finding, you know, this part of the process is kind of nice too, you know, the slowing down and spending more time on the sketch and And I like um, some of the dark showing through here and there too, I find, you know. I used to say, and maybe you followed me for a while, that I didn't want to do a real precise sketch because I didn't want to feel like I was painting in the lines. But again, you do not have to end up with a tight painting just because you spend more time on your sketch because in some areas you're going to paint up to the line and in some places you're going to um, paint over the line and so you know we absolutely don't have to end up with a precise sketch. I said in this little rooster and uh, the sunflowers will be my focal point, the most detailed thing. And uh, I set it up first with uh, this and this, and I had a uh, little clear old ball jar, and I just felt like I needed some color. Yellows are tricky to keep clean, so we'll see how that goes. So again, no hurry here. In the past, I might have already be painting by now, but. I'm actually going to go back in to with the Monday group and uh, in a few weeks and we may paint together those that are interested this kind of similar process do the bright wash and uh, spend a long time on our sketch and then try which is what I'm going to try today to lay clean color not over not play with it a lot and uh, Probably a lot of dry brushing. Dry brushing is when you lay it down and you skip across it. actually got uh, 
kind of an unusual shadow over here. We'll decide whether we like that or not. It's probably for my multiple light sources. for those darkest darks, trying to squint. looking see I think I've got this a little short you know and this is not we could go ahead and uh, put paint over all of this just not heavy paint about to the point we could think about some color here. Now where to start? I'm following the, the, um, the advice of the workshop I just took with Shelby Keefe and she would now start with her lightest light. Um, this is a pure white object. This is more taupey color. We'll start with that. That's our lightest light. <clears throat> okay, we're going to use a Rosemary and Company uh, long white, a uh, long flat. I like those. This is one of their um, bristles. Okay, so we're going to start with the lightest part of that. So I, I'm laying some white out. I think we're going to go for a little tiny bit of yellow. Okay. You know, it looks pure white to the eye, I've got to be honest, but I, I usually don't. I, I know some artists do work with pure white, but I've always been told not to. So I'm putting a little color in it. I'm putting a little, little yellow, a little red, but I want to keep it light. Let's see how that looks. Looks pretty light, doesn't it? All right, now, I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to dip into a little of my solvent. Just touch the brush in and get into my paint. Try to stay back on the brush. And I'm going to try to not over blend. Dip back into my paint pile often. Not quite like gluing, doing a landscape because, you know, with trees you can leave them very, very painterly. We'll decide. I mean, but I do want to leave a lot of this tone showing through. That's why we put it on. goes. It's a big brush for some of this. We'll see how that goes. 
Okay, that's the lightest light that I see. Even though some of this is light, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm going to put a little, I'm, I, I have a limited palette and I mix everything, but I'm going to start pulling a little more purple. as we transition. You know, we may find that we want this to be more blended too. I mean, we'll just see. And then it gets darker as we head further this way, away from the light. changed. Inside here is a bit darker yet. And if I don't get what I want, my I'm going to wipe it off. I'm not going to paint over top of it. actually feels a bit dark to me as I squint and look there. It's darker than here, but that feels really too dark. So let's wipe it off. See, that's probably not something I would have done. Um, at one time, I would have just painted on top of it. So we're getting into some of that dark, but that's okay. Trying to work with this big brush, but we'll see how it goes. It may be too big for some of this.
you know, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's too light, and I'll tell you why. Because my highlight would not stand out on that, and you've got to stay light enough for your highlight to stand out on that. Let's see if we've done that or not. Okay. There's a little bit of the light highlight there. That's about it, I think. We'll move on for now. Um, I do feel like this area here maybe is too light. So see, I like seeing some of these darks in there. Um, at values. Alright, let's move on. The next lightest thing, if we're going to continue to work that way, would be our, our little rooster. And again, he's, uh, he's quite detailed. I'm going to try not to get all hung up in that, though. We'll start with the lightest part of him, I because I kind of already have the darks in there, and he's kind of a, he's light, but he's uh, warm, so we'll mix some transparent red oxide and a little white, I'm going to start with the lightest part of him there that I see, which would be his tail where he's catching, catching a lot of light. And he has a few highlights on him, too. All right. His tail area back here is catching the most light. Put a little solvent in there. kind of fun to try to work this way where you're not blending the heck out of things. In the workshop shop that I took, she's like, there is, she kind of joked, you know, no such word as blending. She didn't blend. But she is an impressionist, and again, that may not be at all how you paint, so... And we'll try to stroke in the direction of the figure. take this and put, I mean I don't want to get hung up in too much detail, but it, there's some of this warm back in there too. Alright, so at the darker area of him, we're going to put a little blue in this same mixture.
it's pretty dark there, so I don't want to. That's his chest area out here. It's cooler too, where it's in the shadow. I'm trying not to, you know, think a whole lot about what I'm painting here. I'm just trying to paint what I see. base of it is green. Let's see, did we get far enough off on his head? Probably not. All right, we'll just mix up a green yellow and blue. And it's a little lighter in some areas, obviously, where it's catching more light. It's all about analyzing, isn't it? Really, you know, being online like this and talking through the process is good for me. Um, make me think about what I'm doing, kind of analyze what I'm doing. So I think it's good. Talk to yourself. Try that. do that they may not be dark enough back there. See his little foot showing. I want to leave some of those darks. switch to a little bit of smaller brush for that head. It's red. Not surprising, right? I'm mixing my two reds together. You know, without going with a very tiny brush, a lot of times I would get a liner brush out. You know, he's got an eye and it's outlined around there. And, you know, I don't try and get away from working with a tiny brush, but I do I have my palette knife. We might use that for some of that. Looking at his little beak. It's not very light. It's yellow, but it's not very light. Trying to use our palette knife for that. Try to suggest. I 
me see, I still a little bit of an eye. You know, I'm using some of the tips that she offered, and yet I'm trying to do me, you know. for the highlights where I see them. Adjustment here. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. So I don't think that's too bad. Um, the tail, I feel a little higher, maybe. Okay, let's move on from there. We're going to place in our. Um, yellow of our sunflowers. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush for the first time because yellow is a easy color to muddy up I think and um, actually we might go with our an in-between size brush. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, something kind of in between those two. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, we'll take some Cadella Medium, nice, pretty, pure yellow color. And um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for the lightest parts of the flower that I see first. Usually I wouldn't, I would go for the darkest, but I think we'll keep them cleaner that way if we do that. White and a little bit of Cad Red. Okay and a little bit of solvent. I'm going to look for the lightest ones I see first. And uh, hopefully this drawing won't mess us up, you know, won't muddy us up. If I lose, use a light touch, it shouldn't. Most of my light's catching right up in here on these little bit down in here and I don't really have any petals there so let's try it okay hard to judge completely till you get you know everything on here might not be light enough but then this is you know the value that's affecting us too All right, let's squint and see where we see them. Get a little bit of solvent so it moves a little bit better. I'm darkening it up with a little bit of cad red, cad red light. Now it needs to go a little darker. We'll put a little crimson in it. Whoa. Way too much crimson. So easy to do. 
I did mention one time the idea of possibly getting a a strap for my head <laughs> and putting the camera on my head. Uh, one person said it might, they thought it might work. Let me know if you think about, you'd be following me everywhere. You'd be watching me mix paint, you know, and it might make you dizzy. So I might get one, it might not work, but I noticed uh, this microphone was sounding a little staticky. I apologize if it sounds that way. <clears throat> if it does, I'm going to order a new one. In the centers, I already have them dark, and uh, <coughs> the center of them is a little, kind of a yellow color too. We'll just try brushing a little bit of, that doesn't really show, does it? Yeah, we'll just brush a little bit of our yellow on top, and we'll see what we think of that. I do see some green in here too, the leaf that's back in there. You know, they actually come to a point, some of them, but I'm trying not to, uh, again, do too much detail. You know, we'll decide we may not even want those sunflowers there when it's all said and done. I put them there for some color, but then, you know, the rooster's colorful, so kind of suggesting some leaves here and kind of see some green back in there. I don't have to explain it exactly. All right, let's move on to our crock, and I will switch back to my bigger brush for that guy. It's a beautiful warm color. Um, we'll start with the lightest part of it first. It's similar in color to this, actually. So that's what we'll go with. We'll go with transparent red oxide and white, I think. You know, at least for the light parts. All right, we're going to try to lay in the lightest parts of it. But that, let's see, that kind of runs over into there. And then there's a highlight, which we'll, we don't want to put on yet. Um, and we're going to mix some orange into here, some cad red light and some yellow. because I'm seeing that nice warm color here. There's a shadow here, which I've got to get in, but I'm seeing that really warm color. See, I dirtied it up a little bit.
rim is darker on top. It's a little lighter as it rounds over there. I remember, you know, years ago painting still lifes and uh, not spending much time on my drawing. Just, you know, kind of putting in some landmarks. And then I would spend a tremendous amount of time painting and repainting and painting to get the objects to read right. too light up there. Okay, let's keep moving. This is a shadow area here, so we'll go back and darken that up. Runs up to that rooster. Very dark over there. I think it's darker in this area too, even though not as dark as that. darker right close to him and then not surprisingly it gets dark over here as it goes away from the light of that as we go. If you have Crocs, you probably know the brush strokes. I mean, the, uh, they're kind of made in layers like that, so it can work well to do your strokes across them. Mix up a little pure orange. I'm going to try to brighten that area up a little bit. It looks, oops, I think I painted my phone. Um, just a nicer, richer color right in there, so we'll put that in. Bit. 
and this would go out past the crock. background is um, a gray color. We've got a shadow area that's darker. We'll paint it in first. And again, I want to make sure to leave you know a lot of our tone showing through. That's why we put it on, right? solvent on that. I don't seem to be getting much coverage, do I? Maybe I have too much in it even. It could be. division between the all right so let's mix some white into this mixture This brush is too soft. Well, that's supposed to be the ultimate, which is the one, a bristle. Kind of struggling to get it to put paint on there, though. blended on the background but I think we'll uh, mix some orange into this as we bring it toward the light into this same mixture it's not wanting to cover very well put a little more solvent in it see if that helps
feeling a little light over there to me. That's what I'm doing. Catching my eyes being a little light. Got some blue in there, which is a little more blue, but I don't think I mind it. We're going to go into that same mixture for that I used for the background, but I'm going to put a lot of white in it and a little yellow for down in here, and we'll see how that looks. I want to keep it much lighter. I seem like I'm stroking that a lot, but I'm trying to get some coverage. Even though we want to keep that orange, a lot of that orange showing through. about that now that I've done it I think it's um, maybe too light a little distracting you know I, again you slow down on the sketch and it gives you more time to think about it but you know when you start laying color on too you gotta adjust where you need to also of course Right, I'm looking around. I'm feeling though as though that is a little dark. We're gonna cool it off a little bit. It just felt like an object almost there to me was as I looked at it. We've got a highlight on this crock, but it's um, kind of muted. Kind of like that. I'm going to pull it like 
dad. I'm looking at the shape of that a little bit. Just a mat. almost too blue though I think I think that's better As I look at this, the picture feels right. The proportions of this guy, he should be taller, really. I've got him squattier than he is, you know. Is it worth redoing? I don't know, you know. But he should, I have him feeling shorter than he is. And I don't want to bring him, I could bring him down, but I like the placement of this compared to this, so I don't think I want to do that. So I'll look at it myself. I might wipe the top off and bring it up just a bit, if it matters to me. I'll look at it some. And I got a lot of my tone peeking through, maybe more than I want. I'll have to think about it. Um, I'm looking around to see if I missed any highlights. I did miss one there on that picture. Let me put that in. Back in here. Make sure you've got it running down. Okay. So that's the thing with white, you got to make sure to keep it dark enough for these highlights to stand out, and yet it has to feel like white. And I think I got enough of uh, highlights on my guy that uh, he feels ceramic. I think I hit them all. fun. Um, I say I may, I may make the decision to scrape that off and I don't want to bring it up too high though either because I, you know, you frame it and then you, it's too close to the top. Let me throw a frame on it for you. I'll show you what it looks like here. You know, they call it a pinch point. You get too, uh, too close to the edge. up enough you can see the frame. Give you an idea. Of course there's a major shadow, right? But it kind of gives you an idea. It really, frames make such a difference, don't they? I always say it's jewelry for the art. That's what I say. All right, thanks for joining me. Um, take you in a little bit. I think the little rooster guy feels pretty good. The only thing, like I said, I end up making a croc squattier. So, 
I'll look at it. I may I may bring the top up, and uh, and again, lots of the tones showing through. Do I want that much? I don't know. I'll think about it. All right. Appreciate you joining me and uh, like and subscribe. I say that every time. I drive you crazy. Maybe you're new, so watch for me and come back. All right. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.